What's up and welcome back to the channel. This week we're talking about color separation and I'm gonna show you guys how to build a look in your image. Now I'm gonna talk about the best way that I found to do this and also we're gonna talk about some color grading philosophies as well, which I think is very important to this conversation. So first of all, I think it's worth addressing that there are different approaches to color grading and depending on who taught you, they're gonna pass on what they were taught in the first place as probably the best approach on how to do things and how to color grade as well. Now, as I've advanced in color grading as well, I've learned that it's probably best to compare those approaches to what you wanna do creatively and how to best get there and then kinda of take the best parts of all of those approaches and incorporate them into your style as well. We'll talk about what that means in a second, but I don't think all of the traditional approaches that people have taught are necessarily the best. And I'll show you an example of what I mean. All right, so what do I mean by that? Let's jump into an image and take a look at something real quick. And we'll talk about the first philosophy of color grading, which some may call color balance or color correction. A lot of people, and myself included, were taught that you should start off by looking at your image, pulling up your scopes, and then trying to balance out your image as much as possible and only then moving on to doing your creative grade. So if you look at an image, you can say, okay, well, we're either too cool or too warm. You can really use your histogram here to kind of determine where you sit. This clip, for example, has a lot of red in it. So if we go purely off of the histogram, we can see this image isn't technically balanced. So. If I look at my histogram, we can see at the top end of the image, we're pretty red heavy. The blue and green channels are lacking in the top end and heavier at the darker points of the image. Also, if you aren't too comfortable reading your scopes or understanding what they necessarily mean or how to best use them, I have a video that I've made on that. I'll link it up above though and in the description below so that you can go take a look at it after this video as well. I have a bunch of tips and tricks in there and we go over all the different scopes on how to use them and I give you some tips and tricks on how to set each one of them up. So. Go check out that video after this one. Also, what's really crazy is that 91% of you guys that watch these videos aren't subscribed. So if you could do me a favor and just hit the subscribe button on the channel as well, especially if you're learning something or you find my videos useful. I can't believe we're close to a thousand subscribers already on this channel, which is crazy. It's really hard to believe that we're almost there. So anyway, Thank you so much to all of you that have already subscribed and thank you to everyone watching as well. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, share this video, get it out there so that we can grow the channel. So in this image, let's use our printer lights to adjust our image. I only start with offset to get most out of my changes first and then I'll dial in lift, gamma, and gain if I need to after that. For this image, if we add some blue and green overall, that gets us a little bit closer. You can see the histogram moving in the bottom corner there and getting us closer all together. I'm still leaning a little red in the highlights and shadows, so let me take out just a slight bit in both of those. All right, so let's inspect what we've done. This is arguably somewhat more balanced of an image than what we had at the beginning. If I do Command D here, our lights in the background are closer to white and some of that reddish cast is gone from the image. So overall, I might be more balanced, but did we create a more pleasing image? Did we accomplish anything creatively? I don't necessarily think so. And while yes, I'm left with something a little bit more balanced as far as scopes are concerned, I'm not 100% certain this was the best way to go. I know for sure I also didn't accomplish any of my creative goals with this image. So if that didn't really work, then what would be a good approach for this image? Well, first, let's look at a couple of images that I think are really well done. This is a still from the new show, uh, The Rings of Power, which is on Amazon. I love fantasy stuff, so I've been watching that show and it's been great so far. The production design, color, and cinematography has also been amazing, so that's why I wanted to take a look at it. Now, keep in mind, this is a fully finished image, but let's do a few things to analyze this image. First, let's get a power Power window and make it smaller here. Let's get a section of skin that's better lit. We also want to reduce the softening so that way we only look at what's inside my circle. I don't want any of the fall off. Now let's go up to this little icon which is the highlight mode or I can press shift H on my keyboard. So what do we see? Well not much, but let me go over to my vector scope settings and I'll turn on the skin tone line. Next, I want to turn the brightness up on what my scope is actually showing me. This won't affect your image, it's just brightening up the signal so you can see the darker images especially. And last, let's do two times zoom here and turn down the brightness of our scope lines. So this is what I wanted to point out. If we look at this, the skin tones are right on the line where they should be. If we turn off this window and take a look at the whole image, what do we see? 
we see it's not necessarily balanced 100%. We're leaning pretty heavily into the reds, especially in the highlights, since we have these tungsten lights right here lighting up our talent. We're also pretty deep blue and green in the shadow since we have those complementary colors. It's not really a problem though because they nailed what I think are key markers for us as humans, skin tones. We have a few things that we hone in on as humans that subconsciously are ingrained in us and we know what they're supposed to look like. For one, skin tones, and two, things like environmental markers like the sky and foliage like trees. We see these so often in the real world and those are things I like to use as markers for a great image as well because it feels much more natural to me and it gives a good starting point for where to take the image. If we go back to our first image then, let's leave the vector scope up but then let's also get a power window again. If we look at our skin again, you can see we're almost there, but we're swerving slightly towards magenta here. So you can see it in the image a little bit as well. So let's get rid of the power window so we can work on the image as a whole. Right now on the vector scope, I also have a couple of other issues, like our colors are sort of going in all different directions here. You can see this part of the scope is leaning heavy towards yellow, and we have also some green sneaking in there. Now, Let's take care of several of our problems here with one tool, which to me is one of my favorites, the hue versus hue curve. I love this tool because it gives me a real world photographic result. I'm not pushing colors into the image. I'm simply using the information that's already there and correcting it or bringing it in line with what I'm looking for. So first, let's focus on our skin tones. In order to do that, I'm gonna hit the, my red down here, which puts a point on the graph. Now, if I go to the hue rotate and start pulling, I know my skin tone was around here, so if I start pulling it in towards red, we're pulling that magenta out of the image, and I can see we're much closer to the line now. I'm also pulling the red parts of the image more in line with red as well. One other thing that I don't like in this, and it's also affecting our skin a little bit, is the yellow in this image. If we're looking for a complementary color scheme that yellow is distracting and even in a film look there isn't a lot of yellow the way we're getting it here it's more closer to like an amber or golden yellow color almost leaning towards orange so let's select our yellows and do the same thing we'll hue rotate again now if we look at our vector scope and our image we've accomplished a few things for one i think creatively we're much closer to getting a clean end result the skin tones are on the line, if not slightly to the right, which is okay. If you can't get it bang on the line, I always tend to err on the side of magenta instead of yellow. Second, we've also given this a little bit more of a film look by pulling out some of those distracting colors and bringing it more in line with the rest of the scene. This to me creatively and technically looks like a better end result and my reference, which is my skin tone, dictated how we got there. I can then come in and do things like cool the image down or maybe push it towards a really more nostalgic feel and warm it up, but my skin tone is staying put and I can continue to hone in on the image. Keep in mind, this is what I feel works best creatively for this shot. That's not to say that we throw the book out on balancing altogether. If we take a look at a shot like this, for example, we have a nice outdoor establishing shot. Immediately looking at this, we're pretty cool and this image might benefit from a little bit of balancing before we start working on it creatively. So if I go to my histogram, I can see, yes, indeed, we're a little cool here. So I'm gonna use the best tool that can get me the result with the least amount of effort. So let's try temperature in this case. Let's push this a little warmer, and there we go. With just a slight bit of tweaking, we're a little more balanced, and things like the foliage and the colors on the houses look a lot better here. There are certain scenarios where balancing an image is gonna be important. For example, commercial work typically has a very clean, balanced look. So that would be a situation I might start with more of an image balancing or a correction, and trying to get the white looking really clean and balanced, for example. All right, so that's where I'm going to leave it for this video. We talked about a lot, we covered a lot of ground, and we also talked about different color grading philosophies as well. We also considered using different frames of reference for the image that we were working on, and that got us closer to our goals for the image that we were working on. Ultimately, neither one of these approaches is all bad or all good. Sometimes different images will require different points of reference. Sometimes color correcting the image may be the best place to start to get you where you wanna go creatively. The whole point is take the best of each one of these approaches, make sure that you're using them correctly in different scenarios, and I think that is the way that you'll end up with the best possible image. So make sure you're subscribe, make sure you like this video, comment, share, do all the things on the socials, and until next time, go out there and create something. La de Vedere.